So for my entire life, my dad's been involved in the top levels of Louisiana politics. He was the chief of staff to two different governors from two different parties. When I was 13, he was all over the national news for standing up to the president and to Congress who were refusing to pay for repairs from wind damage after Hurricane Katrina. He told Congress when the president said he would do what it takes and stay as long as it takes. He didn't say, except if you had wind damage. When I was 14, he ran for Congress to take his place in the same body he had stood up to the year before. I was supposed to pass out campaign flyers to all my classmates and teachers. I didn't. Putting a campaign t-shirt on my dog and letting her wander the local soccer fields, it got him more votes than I ever did. <laughs> so the truth is, at 14, I wanted my dad to lose, and he did. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was the best candidate in the race. I knew he would have made an amazing congressman. This wasn't about him, this was about me. <laughs> and, so, and so, at that age, I didn't want to be that kid, the kid with a congressman for a father, the privileged kid. At the time, I viewed my dad's campaign, his choice to serve the public, and by doing so, sacrifice my anonymity as a betrayal. And so I was selfish. I, in my fear of attracting attention and appearing privileged, I sat on the sidelines when I should have been speaking out. I didn't understand public service yet. So fast forward about six months to the first stage of my evolution. Every year, I went to overnight camp in Connecticut where my mom's family lives. That year, it was the summer before my sophomore year of high school. I introduced myself differently. I said, I'm from Louisiana, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> and and I, I said that because we had just passed a creationism law, the misnamed and misguided Louisiana Science Education Act. And I knew my peers around the country had heard about this law. They'd read about it in the New York Times. And so I was still shy and immature. I hadn't learned to love the great things about Louisiana, the food, the music, the culture, the people, and fight to change the bad things. This law would make me evolve. It would make me learn. So the Louisiana Science Education Act allows creationism to be stuck in our science classrooms through a loophole. It allows supplemental materials that critique evolution to be stuck in. And among the many flaws of this unconstitutional law, the worst is that by miseducating our students and teaching them that creationism is science, we'll confuse them about the fundamental nature of science and the scientific method. So science is simply the way we explain the natural world around us. We can test this explanation, and these tests are repeatable. Science is falsifiable, which means when we test our explanations, there's a specific set of results that if we get them, it will prove our test false, and we'll have to go back to the drawing board. Science is expandable. No matter how much we know, no matter how, how much we discover, there's always a new frontier. There's always something new to learn. And so creationism meets none of these requirements, and teaching our students this through the Louisiana Science Education Act will harm them in all their future scientific endeavors. And with this law on the books, Louisiana students are not going to be the ones to make the breaking discoveries, to be the ones to cure cancer, to cure AIDS. And so this law, when it was passed back in 2008, it made my blood boil. But just as I had when my dad ran for Congress, initially I sat on the sidelines. I assumed someone else would take the law on. I wrote an essay for it in class, but I never really stood up or spoke out. I never did my duty to my state or to science. The good news is, I've finally grown up. About two years later, my senior year in high school, I realized I had a voice and I had a moral responsibility to use it. And so I launched a repeal of the Louisiana Science Education Act. And when I first began this campaign, people asked me, they said, why are you doing this? They said, you know, you're taking on some of the most powerful interests in the state and you have no chance. And that year, we went into the vote, went committee, and we were belittled by the state senators and we ended up losing five to one in the Senate Education Committee. And so you know what we did? We came back. We tried again the next year. And we came back in that same committee and everyone who had talked to me the year before, all the news people, all the reporters, all the pundits around, they said, you know you're gonna lose. The people sitting on the sidelines, they told me, they said, we know what the vote's gonna be before it even happens. But that year, we went in committee and we only lost two to one. Four of the senators who might have voted against us the time before, they weren't willing to show up and vote for what they knew was wrong. So we had lost again. But despite that, we made some incredible progress. 
And we've done some incredible things along the way, and we'll be back next spring to fight it. We protected Louisiana's biology textbooks back when they were adopted in 2010, when creationists tried to throw them out because they were teaching evolution. And we built a coalition to fight this law like none other, none other seen in the world. 78 Nobel laureate scientists, the people who essentially created the foundation we live on today, 78 Nobel laureate scientists have endorsed this repeal. And that is almost 40% of living Nobel laureate scientists. Major science organizations like the American Association for the Advancement of Science with 10 million members and many others have joined us. Public servants, including the full New Orleans City Council and tens of thousands of others are fighting with us for good science. But still, people are asking us, why are you fighting this uphill battle in Louisiana of all places? We're fighting because we need a scientific revolution and the fight to repeal the Louisiana Science Education Act is ground zero. This fight may not be easy, it may be very long, but as President Kennedy said when he first launched the first scientific revolution America had, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things. Not because they're easy, but because they're hard. Because this goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because this challenge is one we are willing to accept one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win. The fight for science in Louisiana is not going to be easy. It's going to be a long, hard fight. But we don't fight because it's easy. We need a scientific revolution. We need a second giant leap for humankind. And so my generation is going to face unprecedented challenges to our way of living and to our survival as a species. Earth's population is still growing, but the amount of living space and clean water we have, that's shrinking. We've recently discovered these superbugs which are resistant to our antibiotics. Our climate is growing increasingly extreme. The biodiversity on Earth is declining, especially in our oceans. And I think most of y'all remember the meteorite that just exploded over Russia. It's a sobering reminder of how we could be faced with a killer asteroid in our near future, and we might not be able to do anything about it. And so I know these threats, they sound like science fiction, but they're real and my generation will have to face them. And there, we have a choice of two futures ahead of us. The first, we allow science funding to stay stagnant or decline like it is right now. In the first future, we allow creationism or climate denial to be taught instead of real evidence-based science. In this first future, we fall to these threats. Too many in my generation are complacent. They would allow this future to happen. They shun public service, they laugh at activists, they don't even read the news. This is the wrong attitude. We need to start funding science. See, the great thing about science funding is beyond the fact that it has about a 30% return on investment minimum, is what we discover, unlike a tax cut, it never expires. Unlike a road, it never needs to be repaved. What we discover will be with us forever. So my vision of the future, I see us funding a trillion dollars of science in the next decade. I see a future where we teach evolution, not creationism, a future where we teach radiocarbon dating, not Noah's flood. A future where we teach uh, climate science, not just plain denial science. And see a future where once we do this, we'll unlock the use of revolution revolutionary new technology like wave energy, like algae fuel. Um, I see a future where we discover how to turn off cancer cells and even aging. But this future won't happen if we don't fight for it. We have to have a second giant leap. This is, as President Kennedy said, this is one we are unwilling to postpone. And so back in high school, back when my dad ran for Congress, I didn't recognize I had a voice and that my voice had power. I didn't recognize that with this power, I had a responsibility to use my voice. I do now. We all have voices, we all have power, and we can launch the scientific revolution. My generation's movement is forming. Please join our second giant leap for humankind and fight for science.